Hi, I'm Julie, this is Reggie, and welcome back to Read Life. So today we've got some cruise news, some travel updates, some cruise updates. So let's jump right in. So Reggie, what news do you have for us? So I have been checking out the CDC um, cruise ship color status table. Um, we will include a link in the description so you can check this stuff out yourself. But uh, have generally been monitoring Carnival and Royal Caribbean. Um, the colors that are used in this chart um, it doesn't make sense, but the colors are at the bottom of the table, which is really annoying. But uh, green status means no reports, that makes sense. Orange status means that there are reported cases um, of COVID-19, but it does not meet the threshold for a CDC investigation. Yellow status means that the ship has met the threshold for a CDC investigation and it's either you know in progress or um, is being evaluated or, or whatever. Um, so all of the Carnival and um, Royal Caribbean ships uh, are basically you know, in the in the green, yellow, or orange status. There's nothing that's in red status that says that there's a major issue. Um, but we are, um, this I, table, oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, sorry. Uh, so this table doesn't have a lot of information uh, on it. Um, so it's more of, you know, okay, if you're interested in getting more information about what's going on on this ship, then this is like a jumping off point. You do your own search and get some more information. And uh, one of the ships um, that has actually been in the news is the Carnival Vista, and it is currently in yellow status. And there's a note that says the CDC has investigated and the ship remains under observation. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing to note right now about this CDC table is that pretty much every ship that has been sailing for more than one week is in yellow status, um, which basically means there have been cases either among crew, passengers, or reported by passengers who have gotten off the ship. Um, I don't think that's too alarming, and the main reason is that the whole purpose of the CDC guidelines is basically to manage an outbreak and limit liability, basically. So it seems as though even though cases are being recorded on the cruises, things like contact tracing, um, testing, um, mask wearing, social distancing in different cases, um, has been working to limit the spread. Now, having said that, we will move on to the Vista. Well, so you mentioned contact tracing. Yeah. Is Carnival actually doing contact tracing? Uh, in theory, yes. So from what I've been told, and this is all anecdotal evidence, but from some of the cases that have been recorded on some of the ships, people have been notified that they were seen um, on video in locations wow. where people who have been uh, positively tested have been. And so they've been contacted and tested. And so far it seems as though there have not been additional cases that have come up from mm -hmm. that. Um, now the VISTA is an interesting case. The VISTA has 27 cases on board. However, only one of them is a passenger. Um, and all 27 cases are fully vaccinated people. Um, which kind of makes sense to say that things like the masking and social distancing is working, that there's one passenger that has tested positive, but the crew are in much tighter quarters. They're much. working together much more closely and they're indoors, you know, unless they're working, you know, the Lido deck, they're pretty much indoors 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, so... I think it makes sense that you'd see a few more cases there, but again, it seems as though they've all been identified, they're doing proper testing, they're doing proper isolation, and so we're not seeing like major outbreaks, 
everybody has been either asymptomatic or mild symptoms, um, which is ideal. And so I think even though it can look alarming, like, oh my gosh, all these ships have cases, it seems as though the CDC protocols that are in place are actually working to keep cruising still going. Um, so I, I mean, personally, I don't think there's going to be an issue where cruising is going to be shut down. Uh, there is the possibility that cruising may be limited to vaccinated only passengers, um, just to limit potential for severe disease. Um, I don't know. That's just my own guess. That is not a rumor. There's nothing <laughs> that's been said. That's just my own opinion. Um, yeah. But that's kind of my thoughts on the whole CDC and the the dashboard. But it's interesting to watch and see what's going on. It is. And, you know, the, the biggest thing that we have learned to expect about everything from the, um, you know, the first sailing on the Carnival Horizon that we were on out of the state of Florida, expect the unexpected, right? Things are going to change. So, um, so that is, that is definitely interesting. And speaking of, um, sailing out of the state of Florida, um, we have, uh, Norwegian cruise lines who had their, um, I guess they had their earnings, uh, earlier this month. I think it was last week. And, uh, interestingly, they have a goal of having 75 to 80% of their, ships across all of their brands, um, which is 28 ships, uh, to be in service by the end of this year. Um, so even though they were the last ones out of the gate, it looks like they're trying to come on strong. Um, and based upon them predicting that they're going to be able to hit those, um, those targets, they believe that they're going to be um, operating um, positive cash flow uh, by the first quarter of 2022. So basically approximately six months from having like a significant number of their ships in the water, uh, which seems pretty amazing if they can actually pull that off. I don't see how they're possibly going to be able to pull it off because they don't have, as of now, they don't have <laughs> any relaunch plans for the majority of their ships. So I'm not really sure how they're planning to do that. Or at least no relaunch plans that they've told the public about. Well, they've told the public about relaunch plans, but they are not this year. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, for example, Norwegian Escape is not slated to be in sailing until November. Uh, however, none of the sister ships have been announced so right so it is a little bit it's definitely weird because you also have one of their major logistics not just where the ships are you know the the ports but the biggest thing is getting all of the crew back on board the ships and trained in all of the protocols i mean that's a, a huge thing because i've even heard that again anecdotally that um you know, even seasoned crew members were, you know, needing time to actually adjust to the new way of doing things. Um, well, so Del Rio himself said it takes 90 days to get a ship up and running. So we're mid-August. That's a lot of ships that require 90 days. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's true. Um, but he's he's been pretty <laughs> bold and badass lately so norwegian is also the cruise line that decided they were going to sue the state of florida in order to be able to require passengers to show proof of vaccination and surprise surprise they so far have won their court case so they won an injunction saying that they have the right to require proof of vaccination and they are sailing 100 percent vaccinated cruises out of the state of Florida through October 31st. So Florida is obviously going to appeal, but uh, 
timing may work on MCL side because Florida has a lot of other issues that are kind of burning right now that need to be addressed. So they may be in a good position to have that hold out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, they've got uh, Norwegian Encore is sailing in Alaska right now. And I have a friend that is currently on the Norwegian Gem test cruise this week. Things seem oh, really? to be going well. Um, and nice. their first revenue sailing will be on the 15th of this month. So um, things are looking good for NCL to get their start going. Um, fingers crossed it all goes well. Very cool. Um, I didn't know you knew someone that's on the gym. Okay, cool. I've got connections, man. I see that. <laughs> so, um, ran across another story um, that actually popped up today. And apparently, Cruise Critic, the original Cruise social media platform, I mean, it was literally everything for connecting with people um, before, after, during, and about cruising. Um, is 25 years old, which just seems crazy, and it means that we're old. Um, we are old. It also <laughs> means we've been cruising a very long time. Exactly. Cruise Critic definitely holds a special place in my heart because that is where we met the majority of our cruise family that we cruise with on our December cruises. Um, so shout out to all of them. But we met the majority of them through Cruise Critic and Cruise Critic boards. So. Yeah, and the and the meetups, yep. right? That's still a, a the primary place to actually set up any sort of um, cruise meetups, you know, and coordinate that with the actual cruise line. Um, and we used to do lots of we used to do all of those things, the meetups plus. Um, Usually the night before, we would get together with people in the port of embarkation and hang out, and it was it was really cool. But we, you know, just for uh, for grins, we both went and looked to see how long we've been registered on that site, and we've been on it for over 19 years at this point, which is absolutely insane. We registered in July of 2002, um, which is completely insane before our daughter was even born. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. But, uh, you know, and I also looked to see when TripAdvisor actually acquired them. That was in 2007. Yeah. I can't believe it's been that long. So a long time. We've been yeah. cruising a long time. <laughs> Hope to keep cruising for a long time. Exactly. Sharing cruise information. So other cruise news, Disney Dream. Disney Dream had their first uh, revenue passengers sailing, and they are sailing out of Port Canaveral. Um, so far, so good. Things seem to be going well. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. They are a little more loose with their vaccinated versus non-vaccinated percentages. High children population. High children and unvaccinated adults. Um, they are requiring lots of testing, PCR testing, five days to 24 hours prior for everybody, um, antigen testing at the pier for everybody, insurance, everybody 12 and up needs to maintain insurance that includes COVID coverage. Um, if you are fully vaccinated, you can opt out of the testing. Um, <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I definitely know there are at least a number of adults that have been unvaccinated that have sailed on that first cruise. So uh, interesting <laughs> to see how things go with Disney. Um, I think they probably are a little more strict with masking um, just because they've been doing it for a while and they understand those protocols. Um, but it'll be interesting. It's It's a pretty big blend of vaccinated and unvaccinated and with delta it doesn't seem like that matters um pretty much anybody is a potential vector and <laughs> should be uh assumed to be infected so i'm not sure right. how much of a big deal that is other than people potentially uh getting more sick so 
hopefully that doesn't happen and things continue going well for Disney. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, for the record, I'm still not interested in going on a Disney cruise. Yeah, I'm really not either. <laughs> I try to get myself interested every so often and I'm just like, yeah, no. Combination of cost, too much Disney, and no casino kills it for me. Yeah. Absolutely kills it for me and probably for our daughter as well. At this point. <laughs> she might want to go only this, and this is terrible. Once. She would want to go just to eat the Disney gluten-free chicken strips. <laughs> like, that's one of her favorite foods. And if you, if you are gluten-free, you know that like finding fried food that's safe is it's tough. not easy to do. And they do a good job with it. So she would be happy to just go and eat chicken strips for three days. But I'm not paying <laughs> Disney thousands and thousands of dollars for a three-day cruise for a three-day cruise yeah. to go to the Bahamas and eat chicken strips but yeah. but I never say never if a good deal comes out you never know yeah for them but I do know <laughs> I'm not going and I and that's fine they've been on cruises without me multiple times um, and it's uh, it's okay <laughs> it is absolutely okay um, so we've got a little bit of weather going on right now. So we've got Tropical Storm Fred. And um, it's interesting. I don't think it's, he's actually turned into a hurricane yet. Um, but, you know, it is something that obviously the cruise industry is very um, concerned about as far as just keeping track of, you know, the, where it's going and and uh, to make plans for changing courses and, and stuff like that. But um, that is something that could affect where people end up going for uh, cruises that are starting, probably start, I'm assuming, as early as this weekend. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it looks like it's going to come up through the Gulf Coast, so it may be a bigger issue for people that are sailing out of Texas. And or Tampa. Tampa. I don't even know if anybody's sailing out of Tampa yet. Um, yeah, that's true. But definitely out of Texas, um, probably more of a big deal for them than anybody that's on the east coast of Florida. Um, I don't think we're expected to get too much weather here in central Florida, but you never know. Uh, things change. I always recommend look at the European model. Uh, it's usually <laughs> more accurate. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the U.S. National Weather Authority. However, the European model has a lot more um, data points that they can work with. So the more data points you have, the more accurately you can predict. So more dots on a line, follow the European model. Um, <laughs> that's my advice. Yeah, and oftentimes we have friends that ask us, you know, if we're concerned um, cruising during hurricane season and not at all the, the biggest thing is are you able to get on the ship and and actually depart the port if that actually happens you're pretty much good to go right because you're actually on a vehicle <laughs> the ship is a vehicle that can go anywhere in the ocean for the most part and that's literally what has happened to us during cruises. And we've been on cruises where there have been potentially three hurricanes and or tropical storms that have affected our, our itinerary. Um, the one that was the craziest, we had no rain at all, even though the storms were in the actual Caribbean uh, yeah, we had, it was we had hurricanes that bookended to, you know, the beginning and the end of a seven-day cruise. And during, <laughs> during the cruise, we would wake up in the morning and not really know where we were going to be yeah. that day. Um, it changed quite a bit, kind of back and forth. They were like, oh, good morning, we're going to San Juan. Oh, good morning, we're going to NASA. Okay, so not St. Thomas then. All right. Um, right. But the weather was gorgeous the entire time. It didn't rain. It didn't rain. <laughs> it was sunny. I mean, you wouldn't even know anything was going on. Right. Other than we had this crazy, you know, 
ship road map, basically, that was just all over the place. Um, but they have the ability to do that. And I, really the only worry, like Reg said, getting on the ship and then being able to come home and get back off the ship. Um, and then also just concern for the ports themselves. Like right. They've been through so much with, exactly. you know, recent hurricanes and then the shutdown of the tourist industry. And there's just been so much going on that, you know, we want them to be safe and be able to rebuild their lives. Um, but, you know, they're pretty well prepared for it now as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know, but the cruise industry really does help rebuild after hurricanes. Um, they put a lot of money into the port to where they go. Um, and it does go to help people rebuild shops and areas and homes and roads. So um, they work together very well. They bring supplies. So hopefully nothing will come of Fred, but we will keep an eye on Fred and we'll keep you posted. Definitely. Okay. Do you got anything else? Be sure to subscribe. We are trying to march towards a thousand subscribers. And thanks for watching. Any final words, Julie? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.